Good morning, everyone. Members of the family of Lizelle, staff of the Malaba Roman Catholic School, parents, students, friends. I speak on behalf of the Ministry of Education and I extend condolences to the bereaved family coming from the Minister of Education, the Chief Education Officer, our Director of School Supervision, and members of the St. George's Educational District School Supervisors. It, it is a tremendous loss to the district. And while we are all aware that God has his plans, the district wishes to recognize the tremendous effort of Ms. Cummings with respect to treating with the children of the school, treating with her teachers. I can only say that while many people believe that leadership is a title, leadership is a matrix, and leadership can only be defined by your ability to move things and move things positively. And that I can say about my friend and my colleague, Liz L. Cummins. She has moved schools, she has moved people. And pardon me if I say she has even moved people who may have not been so kind to her. That did not prevent her from doing what was expected of her. A kind soul, a caring soul. Someone who I can define as, if I may use the term, she will take the, the shirt off of her back to ensure that someone or some group of people find comfort. So at the level of the ministry, we are grateful for the contribution. And like everyone else, I asked myself why. But then I reflected and I had to say, I am grateful for the years. For those of you who do not know, Lizelle and I, the relationship we have is more than just a supervisor-principal relationship. We taught together. We administrated together for almost 28 years. She's a friend. I shared professional... I shared professional advice with her. She shared professional advice with me. I shared personal things with her, and she shared personal things with me. She was my confidant, and I could say here today, while we say goodbye, she has left with everything I said to her with confidence. That is a trait we can all learn from. Selfless, committed, dedicated. And let me say this, and I say this with the risk, that's why I have my friend here with me, because we know Lizelle as Lizzie. Last week, Wednesday, in all her distress, I had a procedure, uh, I did surgery, and I had my review Friday. And even in her distress, she reached out to me to find out how I was going. I think that is the epitome and the embodiment of the individual. So I want all of us as we mourn, and it's nothing wrong with mourning, but to be grateful to the years, the experiences, the joys, the sorrows, but celebrate the impact, the positive impact that she has had 
on many lives. Many lives. We have lived to see the day that the students we taught now have students going to the very school we taught them. So that says something about the quality of the individual. So, as I said, leadership is not a title. It's a matrix. And I can quantify and I can qualify all that she would have done in terms of advancing education selflessly in not only Malabar, but in Trinidad and Tobago. So once again, on behalf of the Minister of Education who sends her condolences, my Chief Education Officer, the Director of School Supervision, and the staff at the St. George's Education District, condolences to the families, friends, the staff of Malabar RC on your loss. May my friend rest in peace. Thank you. When Chris and I decided to speak together, the first thing that came to mind was that Lizzie would be giggling and blushing if she saw two grown men crying up here. So Chris held up, so I will try to do the same. When I think of Lizzie now, four words come to mind. Jealous of the angels. It is truly revealing when someone can be loved so much by so many. I met Lizzie about 31 years ago when I came to Malabar LC. I've had the pleasure of working with her and witnessing her rise from junior teacher to senior teacher to vice principal and eventually to principal. She was encouraged to become a school supervisor many times and honestly, she could have attained that position years ago. But for two main reasons, she always declined the offer. Firstly, because she loved the Malaba family so much. The students, the teachers, the auxiliary staff, and the entire community. And secondly, deep in her heart, she knew that she was the glue that held our school together. And I pray that her legacy will continue to bind the staff of Malabar RC together. On a side note to the teachers, instead of worrying about who is going to try to fill Lizzie's shoes, the issue of who is going to refill the sweetie jars in our office should be of major concern. Through it all, she was my friend. Often when we met at school or even out of school, I would immediately kiss her on her forehead and scratch her head. She would then make a goofy face and move her hands like a puppy. Persons would be surprised that I could be so familiar with my principal. But in truth, being around Lizzie was so easy and comfortable. And in truth, I never considered Lizzie my principal. She was so much more than that. Everyone comments about how she seemed to know the names of almost every single student, their parents, and even their drivers. But what was even more amazing and I dare say embarrassing for me at times was that you remember the names of students who had left the school 15, 20 years ago. She would sometimes start telling a story about a student incident that happened many years ago. And I would simply smile and say, yeah, of course, when in truth, I couldn't remember who or what she was talking about. But she remembered. Lizzie was a bubbly person, bubbling over with love, energy, passion, goofiness, kindness, selflessness, sugar and spice, and everything nice. I don't know for sure what an angel looks like, but Lizzie didn't need to die to earn her angel wings. We just didn't notice them on her when she walked among us. I would miss Lizzie greatly, but I console myself, and we should all do the same, in knowing that there is another angel around the throne. And knowing Lizzie, we should be the ones jealous of the angels because they are having a ball up there. Rest in peace, Lizzie.
morning, everyone. The words of scripture tells us there is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning. Today, a time has come for the staff and pupils of Malabar RC School to mourn. We mourn the passing of our beloved principal, Ms. Lizelle Cummings. 24 years ago, Ms. Cummings entered the gates of Malabar RC School as a teacher one primary and quickly moved through the ranks, serving as head of department, acting vice principal, and then finally as principal primary, where she died in service. Ms. Cummings' unwavering commitment to her staff and pupils was evident from early morning to late evening. Each day, she would be standing at the school gate, welcoming her pupils, greeting them with her radiant smile, and calling each one by name. Her teachers were amazed at this precious gift. Do you know anyone who knows the names of over 500 pupils, as well as their parents, their drivers, and their background information at the drop of a hat? That was Miss Cummings. If Ms. Cummings was not a principal, she would have been an outstanding FBI agent. <laughs> there is a saying, the mother is the light of the home. When the mother leaves the home, the light goes out. Ms. Cummings was the matriarch of Malabar RC School. As you entered the car park and saw the little blue car, you knew that head mama was at home. Her constant presence brought stability, security, comfort, and safety to the pupils and the staff. Miss Cummings had a sense of humor, even in the face of adversity. This was another one of her beautiful traits. While most leaders display a stern appearance, she was always smiling, making jokes, putting smiles on other people's faces, performing mischievous acts, and butting those eyelashes at you which will cause loud laughter amongst staff. The corridors of Malabar RC will never be the same again. Ms. Cummings fostered an environment of not just academic learning, but nurtured in her pupils and staff their creativity and awoken their talents. Ms. Cummings' philosophy was that education should foster the holistic development of each child. She therefore pioneered an extracurricular program at Malabar RC School. Friday afternoons was the time allotted for pupils to get involved in various extracurricular activities, such as football, netball, gymnastics, martial arts, girls club, table tennis, chess, dance, steel pan, and much more. Ms. Cummings was a compassionate individual. She was no stranger to grief and loss. As various members of staff lost loved ones, became ill, 
and faced varying challenges, she stood by them. She grieved with them. She comforted them and even counseled them. She sought first to understand the situation before she was understood. She practiced the habits of good leadership and knew when her individual staff members needed a friend and a confidant. She was a sensational and phenomenal leader. Today, we say goodbye to Ms. Lizelle Cummings, the aunt, the teacher, the coordinator, the comedian, the friend, the nurse, the special investigator, the leader, the principal and servant of God, the lady with finesse, the matriarch and inspiration. These are some of the words which described our dear principal. There is always sadness in passing of a loved one. A member of staff has written a short poem to express our grief. We pray it provides comfort to the other members of staff and make it easier to say goodbye to Ms. Cummings. Gone, but not forgotten. In Malabar's quiet grace, Ms. Cummings rests. Her spirit lingers where memories crest. In the hearts she touched, her light still glows. A legacy of love forever flows. By Sheldon Kaden. On behalf of the staff and pupils of Malabar RC School, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to her niece, Alyssa, for sharing the gift of her aunt's life with us. Thank you to the, fish, the officials of the Ministry of Education, principals, past and present teachers, parents, pupils. A special thanks to the people of Praise Community and everyone who has supported us during our time of grief. We would now like to invite all present teachers and past teachers, present students and past, those who are and all members of Malabar RC staff and those who are viewing on the live stream to stand and join us as we give Ms. Cummings our final tribute by saying, by singing, sorry, the Malabar RC school song. And as true teachers, after four, <laughs> four. In this blessed isle, there stands a song in me, where there's history at every turn. And in that town, there stands a school unique, of which we are justly proud. That's the message of our flag. To love each other like one big family is a lesson that God proclaims. We ask our blessings for parents, teachers, all who guide our destiny. Oh, Malabar, oh, Malabar, we shout it out aloud. Love and honor and civic duty too. That's the message of our flag. Farewell. We will miss you. We will always, we will love, always you. love you. Rest, Rest in eternal you. peace, Miss Lizelle Cummings, Principal Primary.
morning. We stand here as sisters in Christ. We stand in the gap for Lizelle's niece, Alessia McSween, to speak to you of who she was to us. Lizelle Molina Cummings was born to Joe Frederick and Pearl Cummings on New Year's Eve, 1969 making her officially our big sister by at least four months. She lived with her mother in Arima all her life, and they looked after each other. Lizelle learned love, laughter, generosity, and service with her mother. She was also blessed with the doting attention of her bigger sister, Gertrude, who preceded her in death in April 2021. And today, Lizelle has survived by her niece, Alistair, and her great-niece, Adalia. Miss Cummings attended Arima Girls and then on to Arima Central Secondary and finally on to Arima Senior Comprehensive for Form 6. Some of her neighbors, friends, and teachers then are amongst the parents of our own friends today, and they shared these thoughts about our girl. As a little girl in Arima, Laura, Nicholas, and Mommy Dillian recall that she was known as always polite and pleasant, quiet and shy, the little girl who loved to read, who always said good morning with a smile. Another neighbor recalled that when she was about eight or nine, she would go with her mother to Auntie Babsy's prayer meeting at the Wood of Life community on Green Street. Natalie Reyes and her mother recall that when they lived near to Lizelle and her mom on Broadway, Lizelle would always play teacher. She was either teaching the plants in the yard or playing teacher with the older children in the area. Natalie says they would know what went on in school that day because she would act it out when she got home. It seems her love of learning and teaching began very, very early. Mommy Timothy shared this. Many years ago, a young woman quietly, respectfully graced the corridors and classrooms of Arima Senior Com. As a sixth former, she was always neat and tidy with her little bandeau in her hair. Meeting Lizelle again years later with the young people of People of Praise, I remember her very quietly and efficiently packing snack boxes at my home to take to P.O.P.'s concert. She was so quiet, I forgot she was there. I was Mrs. Timothy to her then, and then when her mother was ill, I saw the strength in her, visiting and praying with her. I saw a young girl with great responsibility become a resilient woman. Mommy Timothy goes on, when her mom passed away, there were many Sundays after Mass, or sometimes during Mass, when I would hold her while she wept. And by this time, I had become Auntie Andrea. She would open her arms wide for a hug and then pretend to be fainting. She shared one day that she wanted to have a house of her own. She started but never got it. But our merciful father has, has given to her that house, that mansion that he has promised all of us. Our little circle would come to know Lizelle when she joined People of Praise community in her late teens. She entered quietly, maybe even meekly, but she became a force to be reckoned with in no time. Lauren Rampasad remembered how Lizelle welcomed her into the community and always remembered and greeted her with warmth. Constance, who couldn't be here today, remembers just having you there Lizelle, with me when I was going through my hard time was enough to help me. We would laugh so much. Your natural joy was contagious, and it helped me to heal. She would personalize her encounter with each and every person, remembering birthdays and special moments. Our community moderator, Brother Winston Garcia, recalled that Lizelle was a soldier faithful to the Lord, who served at the highest level, first on the POP service team, 
and then on the Council of Elders, the advisory body for the community. She also went to Augusta, Georgia with Brother Winston to observe the Alleluia community and to help POP set up its own covenant community using their model, which I believe is the model we still have today. And Brother Winston asks of us to please let her life and her death remind us of how serious the journey is. More recently, she had also blazed a trail in this her home parish of Santa Rosa, R.C. She served as secretary for parish council for a few years. For the past five years, right up until her passing, she also was head of lectures and mass hosts. And in that role, she would assist with all liturgical ceremonies. To her friends and acquaintances, she gave good counsel, scolded in the quietest of ways, and would always be ready to celebrate or console with you. There were many over the years who could call Lizelle dear friend, including Arlene Kulin, Nigel Noel, Natasha Caldon, Rachel, and Leslie Anogis. To our own little circle of women, she would become a gracious and sisterly presence with her sweet, dimpled smile, mischievous, side-eyed, and soft voice, wicked fashion sense, and a heart for worship. Led by the Spirit of God, we gradually gravitated toward each other and grew from acquaintances to pairs to girlfriends to sisters Kevin Downs included. And what we had in common was desire for relationship with Jesus Christ our Lord and for life in his Holy Spirit. Maybe it's a surprise to some, but not to us, that this woman was so diligent and caring in her professional life, was equally so in her community and personal life. Through the nights of prayer this past week, we have heard strikingly similar stories of her leadership, her gentle reprimands, mischievous public presence, and humble pursuit of excellence. Was she perfect or superhuman? No. She was just maybe more aware than most of the power of love in action. Lizelle was a natural-born servant leader. Her strength came from her faith in her Lord and the example of love she was shown by her mother. She took who she was and what she had received in life, good and bad, and offered it back to God, making of her life a fragrant offering of charitable, gracious works. Our dear sister Gabby quoted a piece of scripture yesterday for us, and we wanted to share that with the community today. It comes from Ecclesiasticus 6, verses 14 to 17. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He that has found one has found a treasure. There's nothing so precious as a faithful friend. And no scales can measure his excellence. A faithful friend is an elixir of life, and those who fear the Lord will find him. Whoever fears the Lord directs his friendship aright. For as he is, so his neighbor is also. So Principal Cummings, Auntie Lizelle, Lizzie Mel, Cummings and Goings, Dimples, the depth of our sorrow is only surpassed by the height of our gratitude for having known you and loved you so purely. Thank you for sharing yourself with us. Rest in peace, Lizelle Cummings. I always think it is a good idea to stay with the readings for the Mass of the Day, which are the readings we had for this morning. Why? Because wherever the Catholic community is gathering today, these are the words that 
everybody will hear, you know. So we are sharing with brothers and sisters wherever they are in listening to these same words, you know. It is also a good discipline. If not, we could go back to the passages that we like, the ones that we think are easy or the favorite passages that we have, you know. I never see the richness in all the other parts, you know. So today we have this from Mark's gospel story. Jesus is walking along. And the thing that jumped out at me was, and they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, you know. And it is the day that got me. It reminded me of the other passage. Remember that story where Jesus was in the house and there were so many people gathered around that there was no room even through the door. And four men came carrying a paralytic on a bed. And they couldn't get through the door, so they went up on the roof, made a hole and let him down, you know. It is the four men who are carrying the paralytic. You know, that took notice of, just as the they who brought him in today's passage, you know. It really reflects something that is essential in our lives as disciples, as Christians, you know. And that is, we always have to be on the alert for those who cannot come to the Lord themselves, you know. So the they that brought him to Jesus represent the faith community who recognizes somebody who is in need, somebody who is in need of Jesus, but cannot go on their own. For whatever reason, you know, we must always be able to bring people to the Lord, you know. Thank God for grandmothers, eh? Because plenty of babies would not be baptized if grandmothers are not around, you know. Somehow, parents, especially when they're young and busy, uh, don't have that factored in, you know. It's not that they don't care about baptism and faith and church and all of that, you know. But it, it gets, it, it slips by, you know. And then time goes by and time goes by and time goes by and thank God for the grandmother who will come up and say, three months and you do nothing yet? So the grandmother will make sure that the baby comes to church and, and is baptized, you know. Many of us probably would never have come to church, come to the Lord, if not for grandmothers like that, you know, or elders like that. And I think this man was very fortunate in that sense, in the passage. They brought him to Jesus, you know, because he was in need, you know. It's a wonderful sign of community. And community is a great blessing, you know. And the community is not just that we are in the same place at the same time. Community is where we give life to each other. Community is where we strengthen each other's faith. Community is where we help each other to walk towards the Lord, you know, and to have that experience that we need. Community is the thing that helps us to be saved, you know. I remember Pope Francis in his letter, Gaudium, um, his letter on evangelization. He says, nobody is saved by themselves, you know. So it's not that we can walk into heaven on our own because we have the strength and capability. It's because we have brothers and sisters who walk with us, who journey with us, who pray with us, who listen with us, who come to the Lord with us, you know. And the blessing of a community life is when we can't make it on our own, somebody will carry us and vice versa. So they brought this man to Jesus, you know. That was a wonderful community gesture, you know. We look at people's lives and we, exam we, we weigh them up for different reasons. But I think one of our Christian responsibilities is we must take notice of our brothers and sisters and weigh them up for the right reason. 
And the right reason would be if we notice something lacking in them that the Lord can supply, then bring them to the Lord for that. And that's our responsibility for today. We bring each other to the Lord, especially those who can't make it, you know. They brought this deaf man who had an impediment to the Lord, you know. Community is where we have life, you know. Because this is where we have sharing. Because this is where we meet each other. This is where we get our Christian identity. More than that, our Catholic identity, you know. Why? Because we are the body of Christ, you know. Paul used a very, very lovely image. It is so obvious we might take it for granted. That in letter to the Corinthians, he says, we are like the body, you know. And the body is made up of different parts. And we are aware of that, you know. So the body is a hand, a foot, an eye, and nose, and ear, all put together, you know. Can one part say that they don't need the other? No. Is one part more important than the others? No. Is one part less important than the others? No, you know. For a body to work well, all the parts must work together, you know. Even the smallest and most insignificant, you know. I always think if the smallest part of our body is not there, we might get through all right. We don't need it really, you know. Try ponging it to and see what will happen. You won't be able to move, you won't be able to think, you won't be able to do anything for, for a while, you know. And the whole point that Paul wants to make is we all need each other because we're all connected together. We all belong together. We all are one together. And that is the way God has designed us right from the beginning, you know. So from the beginning, he made them male and female who would come together to be one. Of course, the image is a marriage image, but it is also a Christian image because that is what Jesus prayed for that we will become in John's gospel story. Father, that they may all be one, you know. And that's God's desire and intention for us. You know. So throughout the scriptures, beginning from the book of Genesis, God has always expected us to be a community of brothers and sisters together. You know. That's the challenge he gave to Cain when that first tragedy took place. You know. So where is your brother? And he had the audacity to say, Well, I'm not my brother's keeper, you know. But we are, because we are all responsible for each other. We can't look at somebody else and decide, that's not my business. We can't see somebody else's life in, in difficulty or in need and say, that's not my business. We can't look at somebody else and say, that's not my business. That is our business. Because that is my brother and that is my sister. You know. They brought the man to Jesus because he couldn't come on his own. And I think that's a challenge for us today, that we can bring each other to the Lord. And we must, you know. And it's not just about getting them here, but it's also about helping them to come to an experience of love and healing and care and grace, you know. So half of the job is to make sure that they're physically present. The other half is to make sure that they have the best experience of Jesus that they could have. And that's what took place in the gospel story. They brought the man to Jesus. And what did he do? He took him aside and he healed him, you know. We have the taxi driver type disciple. You know what that is? You drop them over the door there and they continue going up the road, you know. But this passage tells us, when we bring somebody to the Lord, we stay with them. And we minister to them. And we help them to be open to Jesus the Lord. And what's the importance? Jesus healed him. 
He was deaf and he had an impediment in his speech. Are those two things not related to evangelization? As if we can't hear, we can't hear the word of God. If we can't speak, we can't proclaim the glory of God. I give him praise, you know. And so Jesus gave him the two essential things that he needed. To hear and to announce. And that's what all disciples are given. That's the mandate we have in common, you know. Isn't that the last instruction that Jesus gave on the Mount of Ascension? Go to the whole world. Proclaim good news and make sure everybody hears it, you know. That's our role in life. We have to bring people so that they can hear Jesus. They can have an experience of him and they can proclaim him by their lies and by their words. They brought this man to Jesus and Jesus healed him. Why is that so important today as we reflect? Because I think Lizzie was one of the most community-oriented people in the community, in the parish, you know. She dedicated so much of her life and so much of her time, so much of herself in bringing people to the Lord, you know, as a community member. Look at the ministry that she headed, lectors, ministry of announcing the word of God, ministry in which she trained people to proclaim well, ministry in which the word became a central aspect in her life, you know. You know what the word of God means to us? It means life. It means direction. It means grace. Don't ever think of the Bible as, oh God, that thing's so hard. You know, oh, that is for them people up here, you know. The word of God is the thing that helps us get through our life, get through our day. The psalmist says it well. The word of God is a lamp for our feet, a light for our path, you know. Without it, we will not have life. Without it, we will not grow in faith. Without it, we'll be blind. You know, and that's the ministry that Lizzie shared for so many years, you know, helping people to hear and helping people to proclaim. And not only that, but she was always ready. Anything else that was happening, she was available. The late Bluba will be making trips up and down because she was very busy. And you didn't have to ask, you know. She would volunteer and she'd be there. And she'd be there right up to the end, you know. So she really gave her time, willingly, generously, to the faith community, you know. As a teacher, she contributed to shaping so many minds and hearts and lives. Catholic education is not just about filling people with information. Catholic education is first and foremost about shaping a person to be in society where they can contribute from the faith experience, from the love experience, and from the grace experience that Jesus also gives, you know. So of course it's about being successful academically, but it's also being a good person contributing person, a person who can add value to whatever they become involved in, you know. And Lizzie was all part of that. When we think of the contribution that she made, she made a tremendous contribution, both to our faith life in the parish community and to school life. You know. So everybody she would have touched would have come away with something of value, something of the love of God, and something of the grace that she also lived and experienced in her own life. You know. They brought this man to Jesus. And I think Lizzie spent so much of her life 
bringing people to the Lord. You know. And for that, we would be always grateful, thankful. You know. We can truly celebrate her as somebody who is faithful to God's commands to go out and to make sure everybody has an experience of the goodness of God. Today, I think we will all agree we have lost a gem here among us. But we gain a great intercessor now. Our faith is we don't live for this life only. We live for the Lord and we live to be with the Lord. That's the most basic teaching in our catechism. God made us to love him, serve him, to be with him in this world and in the next, you know. So trusting that Lizzie is now inheriting the promise that God made to everybody, we can be assured that we have a great intercessor who is now going to pray on our behalf and speak to God on our behalf and continue to motivate us, you know, by the memory she left. So today with grateful hearts, we come together to say thanks to God for Lizzie, for her life, and for the contribution she made to each one of us. And as a faith community, we trust that God will bring her into an eternal reward. And as a hopeful community, we trust that her intercession now will benefit everyone as she continues to bring people to the Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace.